Welcome back to International Relations 101. I'm William Spaniel. Today we're discussing when terrorism is more frequent. This connects back to our previous lecture, where we saw that terrorism is completely compatible with rational preferences. I may not understand why a terrorist is okay with killing civilians. I may not understand why a terrorist is willing to use a suicide bomb to accomplish that goal. But as long as that individual has complete and transitive preferences, then that individual is rational. Nevertheless, if we're taking critics of the rationality of terrorism seriously, we might conceive of rationality not in the sense of preference orderings, but in terms of responsiveness to incentives. In other words, perhaps terrorists are quote-unquote irrational because they do not respond to the incentive structures put in front of them. They just want to kill, 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 and it doesn't matter what sort of barriers are in their way, they're still going to try to do that. Now, figuring out whether that's true or not is important. It drives what we would recommend to policymakers. If it were the case that terrorists were not responsive to incentives and that terrorists were completely astrategic, then we could really simplify what we're doing with this rest of this unit. And instead of focusing on the strategies that terrorists use and the preferences that terrorists have, we could simply focus on how to go about using offensive operations to eliminate terrorists and think about what sort of defensive strategies at home governments can take on to reduce the effectiveness of terrorist attacks. But what I'm going to be showing to you in this lecture, what I'm going to hope to demonstrate to you, is that terrorists are in fact responsive to incentives, and so we need to think seriously about the strategies that terrorist groups use in order to be able to give good policy recommendations to policymakers who are interested in manipulating terrorists and the frequency of terrorism. So the test I'm going to put forth to you in this lecture to figure out whether terrorists are responsive to incentives or not is to see whether terrorist attacks are completely random. If terrorists wanted to kill, 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 kill and didn't care at all about their incentive structures, then we would expect to see complete randomness in the prevalence of terrorist attacks. On the other hand, if terrorists were acting strategically, then we would start to see things correlate with terrorism, and specifically things that we would expect to be correlated with terrorism. So what I'm going to be doing with the rest of this lecture is go very quickly through a bunch of papers that have investigated in a large N fashion the frequency and the prevalence of terrorism, and we're going to see that there are, in fact, these things connected to the prevalence of terrorism. So, for example, in a paper called On Welfare and Terrorism, we have a finding that social spending is correlated with less terrorism. The more a country spends on social spending, the less terrorism it observes. In another paper called Democracy, Foreign Policy, and Terrorism, we see that countries with greater foreign policy activity are correlated with more frequent terrorism against them. So the more uh, effort and the more expansive an individual country's foreign policy is, the more terrorism we see being targeted against that country. In poorly managed political conflict and terrorism in, in India, we see that unaddressed grievances are correlated with more terrorism. If we look at localities where there is some sort of grievance among the population there with the government that the government is not addressing, we observe more terrorism occurring. In sabotaging the peace, we see that attacks are clustered around peace talks. We see that there's not very many attacks when there are no peace talks going on or no peace talks about to start. And when those peace, peace talks start to happen, we see more attacks occurring. In why respecting physical integrity rights reduces terrorism, we see that greater physical integrity rights is correlated with less terrorism. And finally, in poverty, minority, Economic discrimination and domestic terrorism, we see that economic discrimination is correlated with more terrorism. The more a locality discriminates economically against particular groups, the more violence we see, the more terrorism we see. So in each one of these cases, in each of these six papers, we've observed a correlation that we would expect to see if it were the case that terrorists were responding strategically to the incentive structures put in front of them. And so now that we've cleared that out of the way, we can start thinking about who terrorists are, where they're coming from, and what they're doing, what their goals are, and how they're trying to accomplish those goals. And that's what we're going to be looking at in the rest of this unit. Hope you enjoyed this, and I hope to see you next time. Take care.